Greetings to those who watch below. I hope you all enjoyed the holidays and are ready to hit 2021 hard. Before we start today's video, I'd like to give a big thank you to Go City Shelton, Lefty Kim, Lisa Watts, Steffi Ray, Wicked Witch, Jess Black Curtain, and our newest member of those who dwell below, Aztec Priest. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. If you'd like to join them, make sure to check out the link in the description box below. Today's subject is quite a rare and unusual occurrence. It's that of doppelgangers. The phenomena of seeing an exact double of somebody when they're not actually there. These things in the past have been seen as a premonition or ill omen. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Doppelganger or Time Gap by Natalicious This summer, I visited my boyfriend in Pelio, where he worked for the summer. We stayed at his cousin's house, which is an old traditional house in the woods. To get to the door of the house, you had to walk down a path off the road. Every time my boyfriend and I heard someone walking the path, we would run to the window to check if it was a stranger passing by, or his cousin coming home. In that case, we would close our bedroom door. Soon, we realised that when laying in bed, we could see who was passing by, simply by looking at the reflection of the open window. For that reason, we kept the window open at a specific angle, and every time we heard someone walking down the path, we looked at the reflection, and knew who it was. It was a very rare thing for a stranger to pass by the house, but it had happened a few times. Every day, we would wake up and go to the beach bar where he was working and have breakfast together. The house was 20 minutes drive away from the bar. One morning, I didn't want to go to the beach so early. Also, we had had a small fight the night before, and I was still a bit mad. I was awake because of his clock, but had my eyes still closed. I could hear him getting ready, and was wondering if he would kiss me goodbye. I opened one eye to see what he was doing, and noticed he had worn his swimsuit and a bright yellow t-shirt on top. I remember I thought, why is he dressed like Tweety Pie in a swimsuit? And then tried not to laugh, because I was still a bit mad as I said. He said, I'm going, bye. And I said bye back. When he closed the door, I watched his reflection walking up the path to the road. When he got in the car and left, I grabbed my phone to text my friend and tell her about the fight we had had the night before. At that point, I was even more upset because of the way we had both handled it. I think it's important to make clear that I was upset, because being upset I couldn't go back to sleep, therefore what happened next could not be a dream. I was texting my friend and half an hour had passed. She was telling me her news when I heard someone walking down the path. I looked to the reflection of the open window and saw my boyfriend, with his bright yellow t-shirt and his swimsuit, coming back. He was holding a plastic bag, with probably food wrapped in foil, so I assumed he had bought me breakfast. I found it a bit strange though, that he wasn't in any hurry. I immediately jumped out of bed to go and open the door for him. When I opened the door, he wasn't there. Also, there were no cats. You see, there was a cat family living in the garden, and every time they saw him, they would all run to the door, because once he'd opened the door, he would pet and feed them. Since he wasn't there, I assumed the foil was cat food, so I walked around the house, expecting to see him feeding the cats. Nothing. I then thought that maybe he forgot something and went back to his car to get it. I run fast up the path, and he wasn't there either. Also, his car was missing. I ran back to the house and got on the second floor, and watched all around the house to see if there was a stranger who had simply passed by, wearing the exact same clothes as him. None. Then I realised that only half an hour had passed since he had left for work, so we would need 20 minutes to get to the bar, and 20 minutes to drive back home. It didn't make any sense. I called my boyfriend, and asked him where he went. He said, what do you mean, I'm at work? I explained to him what I saw, but forgot to mention the food wrapped in foil. Then, he put his cousin on the phone to assure me that he wasn't around the house. I then texted my friend and told her about the incident. Later that day, I fell asleep and slept until around 8. I was woken up by a knock on the door, and when I opened it, the cat stormed into the house, and there was my boyfriend standing in his yellow t-shirt and everything, holding a plastic bag with food wrapped in foil. 
I was speechless. It was like time continued from where it had stopped earlier that morning. My Encounter with the Doppelganger by Villafan This encounter begins with my everyday working week commute to work. As I only live within five miles, I usually run or cycle there as a way of maintaining my fitness. I believe this is relevant to the story, because it suggests that I wasn't in some kind of state of sleep, but quite the opposite. The occurrence began with a cycle to work no different to any other day. As I came out of an underpass of what was a busy roundabout, and onto a slight ascent three quarters into my journey, I happened to glance to my right to see a car travelling in the opposite direction. The driver beeped his horn and smiled at me, and I recognised him as a colleague from work. He has his window completely down, and he waves at me, and I pretend to struggle up the hill, jokingly panting and waving back. Nothing really concerns me about what had happened so far, but then I realised that he was travelling away from our place of work, and was probably going towards the city to work in another of our school sites. I arrived at work at eight, and passed another colleague, and told him that I had seen John driving away from the school building, and jokingly we cursed him for abandoning us and having to arrange cover sessions for the students. I got myself ready for the morning, and by then, the other staff had arrived, and I informed them that I had seen John, and again questioned whether he'd be with us for the morning at school. It would have been almost 8.20 by this time. I exit a classroom, and see John walk over to his room with his bag. I called out, Where were you going earlier? To which he replied, When? I told him that I recalled passing him in the street, and waving at him, and him waving back. John appeared to be very confused with what I was saying, and was adamant that it was not him that I'd seen. I smiled at him, and my words were, Yeah, whatever. But he stated that he had driven straight here, and they had only just arrived. John appeared genuinely as confused as I was. After this revelation, I began to feel uneasy. I walked back into my room, and began to go through the details. The same car, the right colour, and the fact it was John that I had seen, made it no easier to comprehend. I thought about it the whole day on and off, but it was only later in the evening that I began to question the occurrence more. If it wasn't John, who was it? Because it was definitely made to appear in his guise. I then thought of the phenomena of doppelgangers, and this led me to more questions. Looking back, the John was very insistent that I see him. For example, he beeped his horn with his window down, and looked directly at me and waving. If anything, a bit too animated. Doppelgangers. Oh my. I can't say I've ever seen a doppelganger. However, some of my family members have. In 2010, the family members residing in our house were our eldest daughter and her husband, our youngest son, and our youngest daughter. My husband saw the first one sometime in 2010. He came back home from work at midnight. I was asleep on the couch in the living room. He was on his way through our room to the bathroom to take a shower, when he saw our youngest daughter sitting at my computer. He called out to her. She didn't answer or even move. He assumed she had headphones in, and didn't hear him. He realised he had forgotten to grab a towel from the laundry room, so he turned around and headed that way. Our bedroom is at one end of the house, the laundry on the opposite. He walked down the hall, through the dining room and kitchen. Just as he was about to open the laundry room door, our youngest daughter stepped out. My husband asked if she had just been on the computer, and she told him no, she had been in the laundry room. We all picked on him about getting old and seeing things. That was before I did some research on doppelgangers. Shortly after my husband saw our youngest daughter's doppelganger, our youngest son saw mine. This happened about six o'clock on a Saturday evening. I'd just finished cooking dinner, and was waiting for my family to come home. Except for our youngest son, Zad, who had gone into work about an hour before. I decided to do some laundry while I waited. I always had to keep myself busy when I was home alone. I still had the notion that if I was doing something, there was less of a chance for me to encounter anything ghostly. Plus, staying busy made the time go faster. I was in the laundry room with the door shut, 
when I felt or maybe heard someone come into the house. I shouted, Who's there? Zed answered me, and said his new manager had sent him home to shave, because he had a five o'clock shadow. He was fussing about it as he went down the hall into the bathroom. I stayed in the laundry room folding clothes. We have never kept our clothes in our bedrooms. I have a large laundry room, so everything clothing-wise is kept there. Oddly enough, I was folding Zed's clothes, when I heard, Mom, why are you putting those in my room? I opened the laundry room door, walked out into the kitchen just as he walked into the dining room from the hall. The look on his face frightened me. It looked as if he had just seen a ghost. I watched as all the colour drained from his face. I asked him if he was okay. He just stared at me. After about a minute, he snapped out of his trance. The following is what he told me. He was standing in front of the bathroom mirror shaving when he heard a shuffle. He looked up and out the door and saw me, dressed in a red robe, walking really fast, holding a stack of clothes. I entered his bedroom, so he stepped out of the bathroom to ask me what I was doing. I didn't come from the direction of the laundry room. I came from the opposite end of the house, from the other bedrooms. His is the first bedroom in the hall before you get to the bathroom. I did own a red robe at this time. However, I was fully dressed in jeans and a t-shirt. Nothing red. Before that day, Zed was a non-believer of the paranormal. For years he swore he still was. He refused to talk about that day. About a year ago, he and his wife bought a house built in the 1940s. He's now coming around to the fact that there are some things that have no other explanation. My Cousin's Doppelganger by Thor220 some years ago, when I was roughly nine or ten years old, my family and I were visiting relatives for Thanksgiving at their home, about two hours from where we lived. We had been to their house many times in the past, and I never had any sort of paranormal experiences before. There were quite a few relatives staying at their house that weekend, so my cousin, who's two years older than me and myself, was staying in an extra bedroom in the basement that had a couple of beds in. We went to sleep, and I woke up at some time in the middle of the night, for no reason at all. I sat up, and was looking around the room, and noticed a small amount of green light, coming into the bedroom from under the closet door across the room. I hadn't noticed any light there before when we were going to bed, but it didn't really concern me much at the time. I rolled over, and tried to go back to sleep. After a few minutes of trying to fall asleep, I suddenly got a feeling that someone was watching me, or that someone was standing close by. I rolled onto my back and opened my eyes, and saw a figure standing over me. At first I just saw a shape, but as my eyes adjusted to the darkness, I realised it looked exactly like my cousin. It sort of annoyed me, so I asked him what he wanted. He didn't say anything or even move, just continued to stand there and stare at me with a blank expression. At that point, I got very angry and yelled at him, what do you want? and attempted to push him away from me. But my hands passed straight through him. At the same time I heard my cousin grunt and move in his bed across the room, so I looked over and saw him still in bed. I looked back to where the figure was standing and it was gone. Some people say they can feel the presence and feel like the spirit is sad or angry, but I didn't feel any of that. The only thing I felt was terror. I honestly don't know if it wanted to hurt me or anything like that. Needless to say, I didn't get much sleep the rest of the night. When morning came, I told my cousin about it, and he said he had seen and heard strange things in the house before, but nothing like that. I told my aunt and uncle about what I saw the next morning, and they didn't really say anything. They just basically shrugged it off. But what was strange, is they didn't say that I was imagining things or anything either, they just changed the subject and pretended I didn't say anything. About a year later, my aunt and uncle moved to a different town, and that house was demolished. In the years since then, my cousin has told me about many paranormal encounters he has had, and it makes me wonder if there is some kind of spirit that is attached to him. Hi guys, thank you so much for listening to today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. 
If you did, make sure to like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, making sure you hit that notification bell. If you have a subject as well that you'd like me to do some research on and find some stories for, make sure to let me know. You can email me, um, send me a message on Instagram, or even just pop it in a comment. I make sure to read them all, even if I don't get a chance to respond to many. So, until next time, sleep tight.